Do you have a date tonight? Learn how to read the danger signals. Are you living with your girlfriend? Extreme danger signals ahead. Getting divorced? Read the part on divorce in freedom. Getting married? Read the whole book. At last, in these pages, the decade's critical masterpiece of social commentary, the underground classic, is available to discerning readers. Warning, this book tends to mysteriously disappear. <laughs> How funny is that? The copyright on this book is 1985. Dedicated, oh, this is trippy. Dedicated to those who have lined their pockets with spoils from the largest camouflaged scam in the history of the free world, marriage. That's pretty wild. This book is not recommended by, <laughs> this is funny. This book is not recommended by the National Organization of Women, the American Bar Association, the League of Women Voters, Daughters of the American Revolution, I had one of those as a wife, the American Medical Association, the College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the National Council of Churches. Here's what the author says. It is an accurate observation of a world groaning from a heavenly curse to say a happy and truly fit relationship between a man and a woman is miraculous. The path to such a blessed union is fraught with almost insurmount insurmountable barriers. Certainly the very fact of our high birth rate is a product of disregard of all proper conditions for mating being rather a case of any port in a storm. Gentlemen, when <laughs> this is great, gentlemen, when in the field, have the predatory female available for quick reference. The predatory female, right here. Before encountering a predatory female, you may wish to review the applicable pages. This will sharpen your skills at identifying her and countering her moves. She is a master of her craft, and you'll need all the help you can get. Take heed, for her passion is ten times fiercer than yours and full of madness. Victims of predatory females are strewn all over the nation, writing alimony checks, recovering from gunshot wounds, treating cat scratches, trying to see their children, paying attorney's fees, picking through the detritus of their lives, and struggling to recover from the ruined years. Hopefully by hearing the screams from inside the well, we can avoid falling in ourselves. The opinions expressed in this book are the product of thousands of real-life experiences and not an attempt to proffer legal advice. I can't wait to dive into this. Holy cow. How many here have ever been... I hate to use the word victimized because that's such a chick word. How many here have ever been done wrong by a female before? Raise your hand. Have been deceived, led astray, lied to, how many have ever bought a ring, jewelry, expensive trips, only to hear some lame-ass excuse why it's not going to work? They enjoyed everything right up to the last minute. Pretty interesting, right? The definition of pertaining to or characterized by plundering, pillaging, or marauding, preying on other animals predacious, marked by a tendency to victimize or destroy others for one owns benefit. She was a spring bride, a graceful beauty, radiating health and happiness. The garden wedding overlooked the blue Pacific. On a lovely day, the groom, young and handsome, smiled lovingly as they repeated their vows. Truly, they were a storybook couple with a charming future. Fifteen months later, the bride's attorney was a demanding was demanding alimony, community property, attorney's fees, court costs, child custody, child support, and more. The groom's attorneys responded, setting off a bitter divorce lasting longer than the marriage. What happened? Could their relationship, like thousands every year, have been founded upon a misunderstanding? More people are answering yes to that question as it becomes increasingly evident that we are waiting in the pathos of marital disaster. Now, keep in mind, this study was done 
This was published in 1985, which means that there's 20 years of study that went into this before, before it was published. Let's face it, you can't even buy a bag of groceries today without getting a short course in divorce from the tabloid newspapers at the checkout counter. But what primary misconception can be blamed for the growing war zone between the sexes? It is the quiet, festering, and popular ignorance of the predatory female. Her perfidious, I guess I've never used that word, perfidious, perfid, perfidious, perfidious nature. I got to look that up. Somebody look up the, somebody just Google that, perfidious, P-E-R-F-I-D-I-O-U-S, perfidious. Her perfidious nature has persistently escaped proper scrutiny and exposure throughout most of the century. The predatory female, obfuscated by society and custom, is misunderstood by females and males alike. It is this lack of awareness that eventually leads most couples to the brink of catastrophe. Look at typical headlines of the day. This is in 1985. Man shoots wife, then self. Lover's quarrel ends in death. Girlfriend sues for alimony. Infant abandoned at drive-in. Shooting ends love triangle. Divorce erupts in violence. Distraught father steals his own child. <laughs> you see that stuff all the time. A working knowledge of the predatory female can greatly aid everyone in avoiding these terrible but common events. We live in a matriarchal society. Most of our citizens are females. Can we afford to remain blinded to an inherent trait of most of our citizens. A study of the predatory female is long overdue. We must learn to recognize and deal with the predatory female. These pages are going to help readers avoid the misery and self-destruction inflicted, inflicted daily upon the victims of the predatory female. There is no other book like this in the world. Similar works have been censored and destroyed the unspoken and chilling menace that emanates from the predatory females of our society has until now kept the facts concealed. In the following chapters, the true predatory female is publicly unveiled for the first time. You will learn to recognize and avoid the traps of this woman. You will explore all the phases of dealing with predatory females, from casual acquaintances to the post divorced relations. After reviewing the characteristics of predatory females in section one, you will be ready for the survival guide. It sounds like a war, like preparing for war book, doesn't it? You will be ready for the survival guide in section two. These will help protect you from the ever present dangers in a society that is crawling with predatory females. That's freaky. How many years ago was 1985? All right, 35 years. 40 years? Holy cow. <laughs> you would think this book was written today. I'm just doing a, a quick reading from The Predatory Female, a field guide to dating and marriage and the marriage divorce industry. Hopefully, if you comprehend and retain the contents of these sections, you'll be saved from the matriarchal sludge pile. This book is actually a good, <laughs> it's, it's good training in writing because he's creating this picture that is interesting. Whether it's true or not, we're going to find out. But this was written 40 years ago. This is not today. This this was written before there was anything red pill, before there was anything manosphere. You'll be saved from the matriarchal sludge pile, from eventually becoming an embittered, cynical old grab bag who's had the short course. Now, that's funny. <laughs> you don't want to become an embittered, cynical old grab bag That is just too funny, you cynical old grab bag. <laughs> I'm going to start using that. Who's at the short course? A man who has become a human pinata wearing 50 pounds of body jewelry, jewelry, a velour jumpsuit, and driving around Marina Del Rey with personalized plates that say stud one, may even be rescued from that pathetic mob of hungry, searching males strutting and preening, descending nightly 
upon the profusion of singles bars, swinging their scrotums like Argentine bolas. <sighs> this is just great literature. I mean, just the way he writes. I mean, whether or not you believe any of this stuff, this is amazing, just the way the guy writes. But be warned, he says, those with fairy tale ideas of courtship and dating and marriage may find these pages upsetting. Being no less candid than a process server, the guy that gives you your papers that you're getting divorced, the author relies on naked frankness. Consequently, this material doesn't cater to the faint hearted. Yikes. I need to put on my seatbelt. It's for people desiring the truth about their circumstances, who prefer reality to fiction, and who base their decisions on facts rather than dreams. There are many publications designed to help people attract the opposite sex, set up housekeeping with their lovers, prepare for marriage, or rebuild their lives after divorce. These books deal with the results of mistakes. The predatory female teaches how to avoid such mistakes in the first place. JJM says, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Oh, yeah, I am. I am all about Proverbs. All about it. He who finds a wife finds what is good. Yeah. Hence the problem, finding a wife. Why does it say he who finds a wife? It's like he who finds gold gets rich, right? He who finds, he who finds a vein of gold in the ground gets rich. Same thing. He who finds a wife finds what is good. It's hard. It's difficult. It is not just a matter of, and I, I will tell you this, I have been guilty of this, this whole like pursuing excellence and then you get pursued. Yeah. You get pursued by predatory females. As I have gotten into shape, as I have gotten wealthier as I made money, as my status in the world has kind of risen, I've attracted such predators. You have no idea. Women who come this close, that close to me, pretty damn close, and who were very believable. People, a woman that I've introduced to my family, my damn family, uh, took me for a ride. Holy shit. It's for people desiring the truth about their circumstances, who prefer reality to fiction, and who base their decisions on facts rather than dreams. Let's finish this reading. I think it's kind of funny, but a little bit tragic as well. Consequently, this material doesn't cater to the faint-hearted. It's for people desiring the truth about their circumstances, who prefer reality to fiction, and who base their decisions on facts rather than dreams. Facts. <laughs> Who was it, John Adams, our second president, that said, facts are stubborn things. So true. There are many publications designed to help people attract the opposite sex, but the predatory female teaches how to avoid such mistakes in the first place. The predatory female. This is an old book, minimum 40 years old. Some people aren't comfortable with reality and may initially reject the message herein preferring to perpetuate the myths and fantasies concealing predatory females. The smoke screen in place for thousands of years is not forecast to end here. So the only hope for these untutored lambs, this, this author, I have to look into this guy. I love how colorful his language is. Untutored lambs. He's referring to men as untutored lambs. Maybe that Shannon's words, because the guy, the author's name is Lawrence Shannon. <laughs> I just noticed this, that at the bottom of the book is like a cat, like a jungle cat, kind of like if anyone has cats, you know, like when cats are on the prowl, they kind of like lower their bodies and they just take their steps very slow as they're moving towards the prey. That's what he says right there about the predatory female. Oh my gosh, that is too funny. The smoke screen in place for thousands of years is not forecast to end here, so the only hope for these untutored lambs may be that Shannon's words get to them. That's the guy's name, Lawrence Shannon. 
that his words get to them before the predatory female does. Fortunately for those who would guard their lives, property, and sanity against dangerous temporary euphorias, there is still, there is the still small voice of reason. You are about to hear that voice. Read, enjoy, laugh, but most of all, remember this. And he, and he puts a quote from Mary Shelley, who wrote the book Frankenstein. I behold the wretch, the miserable monster whom I had created. That's funny. All right, so this is kind of a... I could see why this book would disappear from libraries and end up in trash cans or in a book-burning party. You want to get into it a little bit? Plato, the philosopher, says, everything that deceives may be said to enchant. Hmm. Enchanted. Never feel enchanted. Question, can the predatory female be identified in society? It is the, the darker side. And we don't focus on negative things here. We try to be positive. But I don't want people to live in idealism. Idealism is a man's biggest enemy. How many here have bought the ring? Raise your hand. Or two. Right? How many here have bought the jewelry? How many here have gone on cruises, given all kinds of gifts, only, and, and someone say, well, you can't buy people's love. I'm not talking about buying anyone's love. I'm just talking about, like, you know, when you're with someone, you do nice things for them. And when all of that gets thrown back in your face, you're like, fuck, no, I'm done doing that shit. I can see why men tap out. I can see why guys just want to get out. Happens to you once or twice, you're like, that's it, man. That will never, I'm never going to put myself in a position. And for the ladies that are watching this, you might understand what a man goes through when he goes through this stuff. It's rough. It is rough. Oh, but there are a bunch of pussies. No, men give 100%. Men give 100%. Most men do. Most. I'm not talking about the playboys who are just like, their number one goal is just to like, you know, get a piece of action. I'm talking about the guys who actually want relationships and take it seriously, start planning, start looking at houses, start shopping for furniture. Where do you want to live? What kind of garden you want to have? Tell me what kind of car you want to drive. That's the kind of stuff that I did. Pick out a car, honey. What kind of car do you want? What do you want? What kind of house do you want? Do you want an open floor plan on the first floor? Do you want a ranch where all the bedrooms are on the first floor? Or do you want something where the bedrooms are up on the second floor? Do you want a garage that you can access from the house? Or do you want to walk out, go down a sidewalk or a breezeway to a garage? What do you want? Do you want a craft room where you can do your own stuff, create things? What do you want? And we're like that. We're providers. The natural provider wants to make sure our woman is warm, happy, cared for. Can the predatory female be identified in society? Fortunately, yes, although it's impossible to categorize all behavior in a segment of the population, there are discernible traits in the predatory female that once learned may serve as warning signals. You know, there's so many, so many warning signals, and there's a lot of YouTube channels that talk about this, and some people say, oh, they're so negative, they're misogynistic, and I get that. I 100% get that, because I'm from a generation that says, you date a female, and you start thinking about the future. Once you start getting along, you just start thinking about the future. You start thinking about furniture placement. You start thinking about a garden in the backyard. I do believe with all my heart that men and women are meant to be together somehow, some way. In the modern world, man, it's hard though. It is hard to kind of like work your way through the BS, through the fog. Although it's impossible to categorize all behavior in a segment of population, there are discernible traits in the predatory female that once learned can, can serve as warning signals. Marriage counseling usually is the kiss of death on any relationship. That's why I say save the man, not the marriage. Absolutely important. When the man strengthens himself, the marriage stands a chance. Usually when there's marriage counseling, what happens is someone ends up getting the blame and becoming the, the whipping boy and the cause of all the problems. The best thing that could have happened to that marriage and probably in their dating relationship would be no. 
he never said no to her. He was blinded by beauty, and she was such a pretty girl. Blinded by beauty, but she walked on him like a damn rug. He never learned how to say no to this woman. And this is, this is when I got red-pilled, you know, about 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. I said, I'm going to pray that this marriage breaks up and that you learn to hate her, and that even just the thought of her face and her name repulses you. The fact that she's out with another man should make you sick to your stomach. And he thought I was the meanest guy in the world. Oh, my Lord. He thought I was a meanie. I thought you were, I thought you were a good Christian brother to me. I said, I am. But I'm teaching you to set boundaries, my brother. Boundaries. And care for yourself. Rather than being used. I've been watching you get used. I've been quiet all these years. Men don't listen to other warnings. I always refer to that guy on I-88 in New York, the east-west turnpike in New York State, the southern tier of New York that goes across the state, and a bridge washed out during a storm on this big highway. And it was, the river was raging, and this guy stopped his vehicle before he drove over, drove over this bridge that collapsed he stopped put on his flashers stood out in the road and was trying to stop people from going over the edge of this bridge and dying i gotta find this guy if, if you just google it you'll see the story people thought he was a nut who was this nut standing in the middle of the road trying to flag us down? People drove around him, and then he would turn around and look and watch the car just go where the bridge fell out in a raging river underneath. And he actually watched people die after he warned them. Now, am I comparing that to your friend or my friend or someone getting married? I don't think I'd be mentioning it if there wasn't some parallel there somewhere. I have warned men who were in love, buddies of mine. I'm talking friends. I'm not talking about just like acquaintances. I'm talking about dudes that I've known for a long time that are like brothers, people that I've met for dinner, coffee, done activities with, guy stuff, okay? They went ahead. They got married to someone who I did not have a good feeling about. And they ended up getting divorced and being dragged through the mud themselves. They don't listen. People don't listen. People don't listen. That is why the red pill community exists for men. Not to be negative. Oh, you guys are so negative. No, we're not. Stop it. We're not negative. We are telling the truth about the potential pitfalls. And there are scriptures that said, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Why does it say that? Because they're rare. Proverbs 31 also says something to the, Proverbs 31 in, in the beginning of the virtuous woman section, somebody looked that up for me where it says, uh, an excellent woman, a virtuous woman who can find. That's a weird way of putting it. Another, let me just rephrase that. Who can find a virtuous woman? Where is she? It's asking that question because they are rare. It's not like, look amongst you. They're all there. Take your pick. No. No. For she, for her value, her worth is far above rubies. She is actually like a jewel, a jewel that you have to dig for. Who benefits by learning these traits of the predatory female? Everyone, but males have the edge in the present legal climate. Why? Men poorly educated about predatory females are notoriously clumsy when dealing with them. Our earliest history bristles with examples of strong, intelligent men who were outwitted and destroyed by, free, by females in predatory mode. This continues presently where women, victims of their own predatory natures and aided by the court system, you've got to remember this book is almost 40 years old. This is not written yesterday. 
are responsible for the ruin of families, businesses, and lives all over the nations. That's why at the bottom here, see that? Life builder, not demolition expert. Builder, not destroyer. I think automatically, if I'm getting along with a woman, my natural thought is to start nesting. I start automatically thinking about the house that I want to put her in. Am I blaming women exclusively for these disasters? No. Little of the mayhem could occur without the endless army of men untutored in the predatory female, queuing up obedient, obediently for destruction. Little of the mayhem could occur without the endless army of men untutored in the predatory female, queuing up obediently for destruction. I see men just lining up to walk off the cliff, blinded by the steam from their own gonads. Come on, man, that is... That is great writing. Blinded. <laughs> this book is 40 years old, man. I'm going to have to start using some of these lines. Blinded by the steam from their own gonads, they stumble ignorantly into relationships with women and later awaken to find themselves trapped in an ever-deepening pit of emotional, legal, and financial quicksand. Holy crap. Yeah, this book was written before even the word simp came around. So how do we begin to identify a predatory female? One giveaway is that she flatly represents the self-centered faction of the population. While a male gravitates towards things and activities, the predatory female is primarily concerned with herself. Since the publishing industry is extremely sensitive to readers' interests, a glance at any newsstand will help explain publications designed for men Bear titles like sports, flying, electronics, mechanics, and those sold mainly to women are called self. Oh, this is brilliant. Magazines sold to women have titles like self, glamour, image, me, woman, empowered. This is 40 years ago. The predatory female is concerned chiefly with herself and what others think of her. This is a basic rule. A picture of a cat spending hours licking itself comes to mind. The way this man writes, this is way before manosphere shit, way before it. The scent of any accommodations, money, romance, and excitement will have her rising like a cobra from a wicker basket. <laughs> the provider of such diversions occupies center stage in her life. But his identity is not unimportant to her. It's a temporary position. Gee, where have we heard that? She's not yours. It's just your turn. Where have we heard that before? Nobody can amuse her forever. No man can amuse a woman forever. All Pied Pipers eventually fade into the past. Well, what about love? You haven't mentioned love as an interest of the female. Why not? Man, strap yourself in because this answer is going to blow your mind. The predatory female never loves a man. She only loves love. This is a basic rule. So who is the adversary? This is a role automatically adopted by the predatory female whenever she is with a man. She loves to constantly prod him and fence with him. If he fails to respond acceptably, which is a shit test, she deems him unromantic and dull. His services will soon be terminated. In other words, a breakup. The adversary phenomenon is closely related to the defense of the nest that we will discuss later. So how else might one recognize a predatory female? The predatory nature resides in almost every woman, but it's not always visible. It isn't constantly at the surface of their personalities, producing elongated eye teeth. That is great. You may deal with a woman for some time without seeing the predatory signs. But if you're patient and take time to study the female in question, you'll eventually see the predatory nature emerge at times. Even for the seasoned man, this can be an unnerving experience. Someone asked a question, do you use the word female and predatory female and woman interchangeably? He says, yes. Why? Because it most closely approximates the real world. A monster from the lagoon 
or it might blindside you like a bear charging out of a broom closet. This mode in a woman can be triggered by many things. Did you ever see a woman just kind of flip on you? One day she loves you and just a few hours later, she's like a different creature, like different, completely different. That mode can be triggered by many things. Suddenly she wants to get married. Then she's bored. You may deal with a woman for some time without seeing any predatory signs. But if you're patient and take time to study the female, you'll eventually see the predatory nature that all women have. At times, even for the seasoned man, this can be unnerving. Mm. She's, she's married, she's bored. Her best friend got married. She doesn't like her job. She wants to move into a better house. She just turned 30 or 40 or 50. Just pick it, pick an, pick an age. Her sister got engaged for a host of other reasons. Her invisible electronic gun sight begins sweeping the range, scanning to acquire a target. Simon says a woman's life goal is endless happiness provided by men. How can you be sure that a woman is in this mode? Number one, she shows interest in men. This is positive identification. The majority are only doing what comes naturally, what they've been taught by their mothers. That is to manipulate the multitudes of hapless men who continue to rush eagerly into servitude as they have for thousands of years. Usually her scheming is minimal and indeed when she behaves naturally, when she relies wholly upon her primordial instincts, she is most effective. The primal woman is so beguiling and disarming that she is infinitely dangerous. So why do you equate associating with a predatory female to dabbling in the black arts? That's what he says. Mixing with a predatory female is like dabbling in the black arts, like voodoo. It's one of mankind's strongest historical parallels. In the Garden of Eden, it was Eve who had the rapport with the serpent. The witch at Endor was a woman. Ancient literature, like Homer, expresses the supernatural leaning of females. Nothing has changed in thousands of years. For example, the modern female has the uncanny ability to track you in person or by the phone to the remotest parts of the earth. Adds, now, this book was written before there was any computers, email, social media, social media sites. When you begin to fraternize, interact with a woman, you are taking the first steps in a ritual mating dance that, if allowed to progress, will result in your moving about the floor in a semi-comatose state until you are fleeced of money, property, and peace of mind. A predatory female will study you. She learns to know what you are thinking. She begins the strongest primeval death grip known to man. So what is the real lesson? In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were instructed not to eat from the fruit of the tree. The devil evidently studied both humans to find which would be the easiest to tempt, the one that was the least stable. I never heard that before, and that's profound. The serpent, the devil, studied both human beings, the male and the female, and said, which one is the easiest to manipulate? Which one is the easiest to tempt? Which one is the least stable? Consequently, Eve was tricked into eating the fruit. But remember, Eve was tricked. Adam wasn't. Adam groveled to avert loneliness. Even today, thousands of men are flushing their lives and fortunes, usually into the marriage mill, to avoid being left by or without a woman. Learning to say no and learning to say bye-bye are freaking superpowers that most of you don't have. If a woman wants to go, give her what she wants.